so now let us start the paper one and uh, this paper one is common to all the branches who are going to apply or who are going to attempt the UGC net examination so hence you can see the paper one is mostly based on your research or, or research aptitude and teaching aptitude and it is also based on your aptitude skills so if it is if this first part is common to all the branches then you can expect that they are going to ask the questions which are not related to specific branches a specific domain only that is for example if you are a student from biology then they are not only going to ask you questions from biology they are going to ask you questions from every single branch from every single domain and you don't need to have a phd on every single subject for example you don't need to have a phd on the paper one that is uh, uh, educational methodology so you don't need to have a phd on educational methodology what they want to know is at least you should have a knowledge of all these different areas so that you can improve in your working skills for example if you are st studying the subject which is educational methodology then is educational methodology is not taught in some of the you know domains like we have uh, students who are applying from mtech that is computer science mtech they are applying for, uh, for ugc net examination then they have never studied the subject which is uh, education methodology the students who are applying from mca these students never studied the subject which is educational methodology we have environmental science and so on so whatever in the first paper we are going to cover that is uh, we have to cover everything and this everything we are not going to do phd on a single topic as at least we should have an idea of every single topic so that we can clear it and clearing the paper one is very easy as compared to paper two and paper three so we'll start with the educational methodology we'll start with some fundamentals and we are going to cover everything crisply because whatever i'm going to teach you in this paper one that is going to be good enough for you to clear the paper one examination okay so we'll start with the teaching part so uh, how can you define teaching so teaching can be it is a it is only the information which can be transferred so in, in case of teaching we are trying to transfer the information from the teacher to the student so you can write it like this uh, only the information the information can be transferred can be transferred okay now when i say objectives of teaching then objective of teaching means the main objective of teaching is bring out the social desirable behavioral changes in the students according to the need of the society right so let me repeat it again i'm saying the main objective of teaching is to bring about the social the social desirable behavioral behavioral changes in the student according to the needs of the society so whatever i'm pointing uh, points i'm speaking here it is better if you can write all those points in your notebook so that is really going to help you so this is the objective of teaching objectives of teaching objectives of teaching okay now here teaching is both art as well as it is the science you can say it like this teaching is both art and science and science okay so why teaching is called an art because teaching depends on personal skills and personal skills is uh, is an art and when i'm saying teaching is science that means teaching will be successful if it is systematic if something is systematic then it is called as science okay so we can write out these points here teaching is art why because a teaching is or can say teaching uh, depend on depend on the personal skills personal skills and personal skills are free or can say and personal skills personal skills 
is an art is an art and why when i'm saying teaching is a science when i'm saying teaching is science because teaching follows a systematic methodology of transferring information so you can say teaching will be successful if it is systematic and it if something is systematic then that is called as science okay and you can also define teaching as a teaching is a process you can also say teaching is a process teaching is a process and you can also say teaching is dynamic in nature because it depends on dynamic concerns of the society right so you can say teaching is dynamic in nature teaching is dynamic in nature in nature because it depends on the dynamic concerns of the society and teaching also you know see environment is a big factor in, ter in terms of teaching because teaching depends on the environment itself okay so this is see this complete subject is uh, you know mostly like uh, psychological we are go you are going to define what is teaching and uh, you are going to identify what are the goals and your responsibilities while you are uh, teaching some students or while you are making a career in teaching then you should follow some you know responsibilities and roles or some ideal idealism which you have okay so you can say there are three teachers in mahabharata so in in case of mahabharat there are three teachers three teachers in mahabharat and they are like this so this is three not three this is three number one is dronacharya dronacharya second one is kripacharya kripacharya and third one is sandipani okay so when i'm saying dronacharya dronacharya is uh, no we are providing higher education or you can say advanced education those teachers are called as dronacharyas when we have kripacharyas kripacharya means the uh, we are providing the basic knowledge and when we are saying sa sandipani that means uh, these teachers are providing complete education to the student like your mother is there your mother is going to provide your complete education to the student so these are called as sandipani okay and there are three types of teaching systems which are available so you can say that teaching system teaching systems there are four types of teaching system number one is bipolar teaching system bipolar number two it is tripolar teaching system tripolar number three it is quadrupolar teaching system and number four it is a potapolar teaching system potapolar teaching system okay when i'm saying we have a bipolar teaching system it means a single teacher is giving or single teacher gives every level of knowledge to uh, every level of knowledge to the students and he is only responsible for giving the whole knowledge okay so you can say in case of bipolar we have only two uh, person which are available you uh, know uh, which are responsible here which is number one is a teacher second one is a student and this single teacher is responsible for every level of knowledge and he is also responsible for giving the whole knowledge to the student and second is the tripolar teaching system tripolar teaching system that means we are going to have three poles like this and all these three poles are very very important for example the first pole is the content the second pole is the teacher and the third pole is the student content teacher and the student and then we have the quadrupolar teaching system in case of quadrupolar teaching system we have four poles like this where one pole is the teacher one pole is the teacher second pole is the student third pole is the content and the fourth pole is 
the context fourth paul is the context when i'm saying content content means what he is teaching and context means why he is teaching okay so you can say in case of quadrupolar teaching system some content and different context so according to the context we are going to change the behavior okay again we have pota polar teaching system in case of pota polar teaching system teaching affects according to the environment so you can say teaching affects according to the environment according to the environment right so you can draw it like this there are five major portions of this number one is a teacher and the student then we have a context we have a content as well as we have an environment which also plays a major role environment in this system right so if in options for example a tripolar is present then answer will always be tripolar otherwise we have potapolar teaching system which we follow so tripolar is that means there's a teacher what is the content he is teaching and there is a student okay so in the same way we can study what are the requirements of teaching so for teaching we require a teacher we require a student we require content we require context and we require environment so you can say what are the requirements of teaching requirements are number 1 is the teacher number 2 is the student number 3 is the content number 4 is the context and number 5 is the environment is the environment okay so we are going to see all these requirements uh, again so here again so again i am explaining that we are not going to study this uh, every subject in, in complete in depth we are just going to study the important points or you can say crisp uh, thorough or crisp study of every portion so that we will be able to answer the questions so will not be you no know, will not be blank in the question paper so we don't have to score 100% marks here we don't have to score 80% marks here we just have to qualify the cutoff okay and the cutoff is already defined and the most of the questions which are going to asked uh, which they are going to ask from the paper one they will be based on your general aptitude and your your idealism that means what do you think what is your thinking process uh, how how do you think teaching should be or what are the various teaching methodologies which you can follow or how can you make your teaching more dynamic and more interesting so we are going to follow all these concepts only so let us move on to the next video and we'll study all these things in a complete detail